All right, so here we're starting actually re properly recording the meeting here with sound from both sides, so I'm not talking to myself only. So welcome to the, uh, no, what is it, November 6th today, meeting of the OSC dev team. Um, just a brief overview on the numbers here. You see the nice spike since about August on the development team. That's what's responsible for that is the addition of the two, two full-time people in California to the team and with a baseline of OSC developer team. Now at the same time, one thing that we're focusing on right now, um, just copy and pasting this. We're focusing on developing, uh, in addition to the, the development team, there's the OSC fellows. We're working on chapters, not, not really chapters, but frame it as OSC clubs for high schools and universities where we've got our first three-day training of a, an advisor for such an OSC club coming up on Ontario, Canada. So you can take a look at that. Uh, but the idea is that um, really pushing the limits of the crowd-based development with, with um, a lot of people using simple-to-use tools. The, the place for high schools and advisors could be that with the 3D printer, we're getting involved in physical prototyping while we do the, um, the design work. And it seems like the 3D printer is actually the device that connects the physical reality to the game of remote development. So, so you can say that since the times of our 3D printer, we can involve people in a better way around the world. So that's actually, um, I think that's a, that's a good insight that people are can enter that. And then the whole whole thing can pay for itself if we're running workshops, if, if OSC clubs are developing products, small products, which we, you know, on our website, we don't have a single product yet. We have, we're almost posting the kits on our website. But little things that are pretty printable that are very useful, I think that that still is a would be a high, a high value, for product development, and then Ruslan. So we're talking about uh, Ruslan's coming back to the development work, um, and we're firing up on page. So the overview here on page two, I'm firing up the cluster. This is where I actually am in my little cluster room here right now but we're firing up the printers to print parts for the London and Ontario workshop. So, so the three day immersion for the, the OSC club advisors is what's happening there and printing parts and getting the printers ever better, more reliable, um, easier to build doing the low cost version, which was the design sprint of last week, the, the D3D mini, which, which has four, four moving axes instead of five moving axes, like five as in, uh, four, four means double, not double Z, but just a single Z, uh, simplifying that. Now, for just as a bigger overview too, like for January, we're, tr we're still wrapping up on, on lining up the, the first event where we built the 3D printer, filament maker, and plastic grinder. So over this month, the big update is, is I'm firing up my cluster here. I'm going to be printing parts for a simplified version of the Lyman filament maker. So we've built the Lyman filament maker. It's, you know, it's got a lot of 3D printed parts and it's not as simple as it could be. So you can actually see the simplified um, on my log, simple, if you look for simple, simple, I want to point you to that so everyone's aware of this. Who knows where that is? Filament. No. I want to point to that because oh, where is that? Okay, so it's still under the line of film and extruder page. It's, it's called a simplified version. Now, if you go to um, Lyman film extruder page, that's loading up here. The cat is up there, but take a look at that. Actually, you know, everybody uh, do take a look at it. I'm using two by fours or actually two by sixes. So look at that simple thing. Like uh, you see the original, which we worked hard 
to develop last year to open source that fully and within FreeCAD because none of the FreeCAD files were available. Now take a look at the, the one, the version on top. Just trying to strip down a lot of the complexity, putting like more blocky wood and, and simple simple pieces. If you look at the details of that, it's got many more many less parts and more integration. Like for example, the the chamber, like where the auger is, is also doubles up as a hopper. So you the, all the pellets or your 3D printing printer filament material, your crumbles or your pellets go into that little funnel. Um, Let's see, I will put that, let me just copy and paste that. But that's, uh, I did that about a week ago. So this is relatively new. And uh, this is what I intend to build over the next month here. Uh, just kind of like the next, next iteration and really focusing on simplicity of build. Less 3D printed parts and simple structures such as such as wood blocks for hanging the whole thing on a wall so and then of course the electronics are pretty much identical but it's but the electronics are mounted in a simpler way so that we don't have like this whole big electrical box on the bottom it's a simple panel to the right hand side and the power supply is on the back so it's not taking up all that space it's it's in, in the back under the wood blocks um, so that's um, I'm gonna put a slide here for that now in addition to so as I mentioned we're gonna try to go for the first workshop not try to we will do a first workshop it's looking right now as as January 31st through uh, fe February no it's actually February 1 2 and 3 so first week of February uh, after the you know it's still cold but that's gonna be out in Los Angeles California where it's warm it's, it's summer year round uh, and for that on top of the building the whole ecology of products really make it work like uh, planning on doing a video where you show the filament maker you show the grinding of plastic we show the six foot printer which we built that was um uh, when was that it was last year not this year but last year we never really ran that too much, just a little sample run, but now we're ready to print things like two by fours, vertical, tall vertical um, pieces of plastic, like plastic lumber. And then we're gonna fire up the one cubic meter printer, which we built at the Kaufman Foundation a few weeks ago uh, to print things like furniture. So, so at that point, it's really critical that we get the filament making from scrap because otherwise the plastic just gets ridiculously expensive because it's $20 a spool of a kilogram of, of um, 3D printing plastic. So that's where, where I'm at. I am here. Uh, we've got good progress from the design sprint. So, hey, do you want to tell us? Um, you, I see you did some good work on the, um, the D3D Mini PVC version. Tell us more about it. Yeah, I did some of that after uh, the design sprint and I was familiar on the uh, standard in wiki for that and uh, getting a little bit of start, uh, start on some of the files, just mostly basic files. And I found it pretty easy to edit the, you know, I just kind of put the axes in there. I found it pretty easy to adjust those, uh, just moving the parts around. But obviously, uh, I don't think that's all uh, accurate yet. And I guess I need to refine um, maybe exactly what stuff does and does not go in there. Because I copied that stuff from the, uh, um, those axes from the, uh, uh, like you recommended on the circuit mill. Yeah. So um, I think there's some stuff in there. I don't just I wasn't sure what the end stops. I couldn't remember. I think actually I was wondering if uh, that design sprint Friday got recorded okay or not. I didn't it see did. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I need to post that up. I didn't get a chance to put it online. I compressed it with handbrake and sorry for upload. But yeah, we do want to publish that because that will that could potentially get other people involved. Now, why am I not opening up your file? So I'm trying to open up your overall file. Um, yeah, it should, the, the one with the axes, the frame in there should be fine. But the, uh, it, I just copied that stuff over real quick and kind of moved it, uh, adjusted the size on that. And then I decided with that wasn't quite right because as we discussed right the, uh, it kind of needs to be aligned so that you know, most of the axes are kind of at the midpoint oh, yeah. or partly outside of the frame and all that. So 
But what I did is I simplified the file a little further so it's easy to edit by... Yeah. Um, I simplified all the parts except for the rods because that's all you need to do, right? You just need to change the length of the rods and move the other parts around. And yeah. there be, I don't know if there's like a scene, there's probably some extra stuff, but... Yeah. No, that's really cool. So, so um, we don't have the hanger for the the PVC to the axis hanger. Uh, no, I haven't yet designed yeah. that yet. Uh, so I've I'll published. published. I'll publish um, a video, and maybe we can get some help from other people. This is very cool. You know, this is getting towards public design. So here you've got a a, a child now with Ruslan's dedicated many hours. Uh, Ruslan, how many hours did it take you to do the, the 3D printer workbench just to get the frame? Um, couple of days, I suppose. Couple of days? Yes. I would say wouldn't, wouldn't it be more because you had to... Just two days? Just a couple of days? To... Uh... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I need, uh, because I need needed to uh, construct all, all the parts and all the yeah. things. So this uh, took a, a, a lot, a lot of days. Uh, until uh, the, uh, this PVC um, parts were ready, uh, I spent several months. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. So now, instead of spending months, now a, an average person can take FreeCAD with the 3D printer workbench and make their frame like that in about five seconds. Five seconds is significantly less than a couple of months. So that's, you know, that's, you know, you can say that's an example of public design coming into play. If you have the tools to design things and you got this stuff pre-engineered and designed within FreeCAD, added to FreeCAD, then you can do really magical stuff. Like uh, the goal here is, I mean, I, I kind of like this because this, this is a good example where you take existing parts that we already have, like the axis. This is actually the green stuff. Is the axis from the universe, the CNC circuit mill, and just manipulating that around a bit gets you to uh, a smaller version of the 3D printer. So this is that's really cool. Uh, it's you can see in this what's happening here the the promise of a public design process where people use part libraries to to do, do impressive design. The point being the the part libraries are already engineered, so you can work with this like a Lego set. And that's that's good. Uh, so, Abe, what are your next steps on that? Were, were you going to work on that more? Uh, that I, I had started earlier in the week on the um, kind of breaking down the the, the live track uh, last version seventeen ten. Yeah. Uh, trying to modularize modularize that more. I, I kind of put that way more with some of my other files. And, had done things with lots of parts and, and files, and that's the way it's stuff was done before with that light track and so on. And I think it'd be a lot easier if everything is broken down into, uh, you know, like more of the individual unique parts and files by themselves and so on. Uh, I think it can actually be done that way more so that it can be simplified and the file sizes will be smaller. And uh, there are some rules the way you can use assembly constraints sometimes to do those things, but we run into issues with that. In fact, I, I was. I was going to say that I, I tried to, I think, well, before the design sprint, I tried to, to for a test to as quickly assemble one of those PVC frames, uh, just with the two unique parts, the corner and the pipe. And I got really quickly, I got pretty far. But then trying to get the corners to constrain at the right angles, it started doing strange things like twisting 45 degrees, and I couldn't get to rely. You know, I just couldn't. I thought, Give up on that because the similar for parts was just too slow. And if you could make the file, there's ways to make it do it. But that doing stuff with software that way really increases uh, speed. So I'm hoping to learn to do more of that. Uh, been learning Python a bit myself as well, but uh, I've always to go with anything with FreeCAD. So um, yeah, but I'm just gonna keep breaking down. I think uh, the the electric world into smaller pieces, modules, any parts. Yeah. Uh, and, and for the D3D as well, um, making things more modular in almost every case seems seems better. Uh, the latest the part library, are you working at LiveTrack? What is it? 18.01? Uh, I meant to, to link to that. Um, what I did was start to uh, we have like a 
just one big several megabyte file, and I think that file is that big just because there's a lot of extra stuff in there. It's the way the file done. So I started putting that on on a GitLab repo. Uh, let's see, how did I? I could upload that there. It's yeah, it's listed on my blog, but I need to copy it. Blog. Let's see what version we're working on. Because in the lap of genealogy, we gotta keep that updated. The last one is Microtrack version seventeen point one zero. So we need to uh, update that. Well, the micro track and the live track, uh, I think, was started around that time. So it's version 17.102, the live track. Uh, there, I've, I've added the link there. So uh, I, I just got to start on, on breaking that down earlier. We're going to have it worked on that for a little bit. But uh, generally, it's just to separate out stuff into files so it's easier to, to edit. I mean, a bunch of this stuff is created, I think, the way... We want it to be statically, but I think separating it off into other files and kind of maybe reassembly and changing whatever parts need to be changed on the back end of the tractor uh, to get the cubes to fit. It'll it'll make a actually a smaller files. Uh, is there a wiki page on the wiki for uh, the tractor? This is my track seventeen point one zero. Okay. Is it need to update? 1710 page probably with something so i'll look for that i don't think i did point one oh. life track because we got okay there is life track version 17.10 that needs to be added right now i'll add that to the tractor genealogy Is your working document that that life track seventeen point one out? Working document. Um, let's see. I haven't. I hadn't edited that page yet. I think I'll add the. Um, I'm gonna add a link to that repository where I was checking yeah. the files. Okay. Yeah. So breaking down into very simple parts. So that's that's the way to go. Now, um, design guides are what we're going to be producing more of pretty soon like for the 3d printer we're well qualified to do that also for the tractor as we get the immersion program on the heavy machines but the idea there is so we generate library parts uh, that's that's the most critical part because those are like your your letters to the sentences and words that make up the products so if you have the library parts if you have free CAD uh, and if you have basic design of how parts go together and that's that's like you can call that design rules uh, listing a number of design rules will get you far to using existing parts and actually making meaningful things out of that. So definitely a process that can lend itself to public design uh, once we have more of the library parts as well as the, the design manuals, the design guides for how to do that. And then, of course, like Ruslan is working on the workbenches. Yeah, if you have a workbench that allows you to, to drag and drop things in there easily and generate parts, yeah, that makes it really easy. And then we can start really getting um, uh, many people involved. Like, like for example, the high school clubs and stuff, first robotics, preparing for war. We can be preparing um, OSC clubs for peacetime economies when a lot of people are doing products that matter, design that matters. And... Um, actually generate with that with with public design you can get into entrepreneurship where people are actually building the, the world around them so it's that is part of a bigger package good stuff um, okay and um, uh, let's see Abe any further comments on what you're up to um, any blocks well, the, uh, I guess the reasons uh, I was trying to hopefully downsize that file for the tractor is it was a little slow for me, but I noticed too that um, today I found a comment, I think it's by, by Aiden. He said uh -huh. it was about uh, something I had mentioned on my log. He, he linked me to a uh, universal tube builder because yeah. uh, the yeah. reason that file was kind of slow with the tractor is just because there's a lot of stuff in there, but we also lack uh, some real some more advanced stuff with 3CAD, like we might have concerns for strength for these things. And yeah. So far, I don't think we've done hardly any um, finite element analysis testing, right. but that would be cool. And so yeah, the square tubing that we've been using is not realistic, and so 
was hoping to get those file sizes down and replace some of that unrealistic tubing with, you know, tubing that's more realistic. And I think the reason that we didn't go with that originally is because it makes the file sizes a little bit bigger. But uh, if we can design that uh, a little differently with the files, hopefully, um, can use some of that other tubing and then have modules that we can we can test. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm not familiar yet with FreeCAD and how you could do. Um, uh, I don't know if welds are that important. Usually, if you have welds, I think that's that's not where it breaks. Uh, but uh, with a large tractor like that, we get to know, um, especially on the, the design of the back in there, what what is uh, effective for strength. Especially as you start cutting more custom parts with CNC and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, did you open up the universal tube there before? I don't think I saw that one before. I saw some other uh, tubing styles that we had on the, on the wiki before, uh, but I hadn't, hadn't been working with those. So yeah, I think universal tube better. I'll look at that some more. I don't think I was aware of that. For. So there, there's probably a few different ways to do that, and I, th I was thinking there might be some macros or something that could be done to make the tubing easier to work with. Right. How do you? Let's see. How do you use this universal tubing builder? Um, I need to open it again myself. So there's a. What are the instructions for it? So Aiden linked to that. I think it has a spreadsheet, and I haven't utilized it. Open the Universal so, Tube Builder but... file and use the spreadsheet to create tubing with all dimensions parametrized. All right. Um, where is it? How do you do the spreadsheet? That would be in the spreadsheet workbench. Yeah. There's, well, there's a, a, a How feature in there in the list at the bottom, I think, and it says dimensions, and that's a sheet. Well. I guess that's a sheet, but it has it has properties listed under the um, property. Oh yes, model. there. Ah. Whole standoff. Oh, so the tree view. Um, Wait, how does that work there? So we've got the tree labels and attributes under data. Let's see tree view. Oh, I see. If you right-click dimensions, you can click uh, show spreadsheet. The top yeah. of that menu and it shows the, the spreadsheet yeah that's right wow okay so tube height tube width corner rate is tube length 12 okay let's see if i change it to 24. did that work and how do you make it generate it again how do you actually run it because i put in 24. Um, how do you run it? Well, I don't know if there's a way. It might change some of those hidden components there. Let's see, pads and sketches. Yeah, it looks like there's sketches. Let's see, for tube blank. Well, some of those sketches are not labeled. Okay, we need an instructional on that to make it user friendly. That's good. That's very useful because it's, it's good. And the file size of that, you know, 50, 50 K, that's acceptable. Um, yeah, that's not immediate transparent how that shows up because I would expect it to show up. Um, Yeah. Okay. We need an instruction on how to how to operate that. that yeah, I'm not seeing how to edit it either. I had just opened it a while ago, so maybe it's. Uh, just... I'm in FreeCAD 16. Maybe it needs. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing is I saw those X, Y, Z planes up there, and I was thinking that maybe it's designed for FreeCAD 17. But sometimes that stuff will work in 0.16 as well. Okay. Well, forget that one. It's not working in 16. Um, okay, cool. 
Anything else? Hey, any um, other updates or blocks? I was wondering um, let's see what the priorities may be for the 50, 50 PPC Mini. Yeah. Under with that. That's a priority I can concentrate on yeah. that more. I was like, there's your plan would you do that in upcoming workshops? Uh, no, priority. It's like, what's a priority? The priority right now, I think, is... Uh, I mean, the I think the low cost 3D printers. I think a lot of people um, have issues with the eight hundred dollar for the kit, five hundred in parts. If you do it yourself, we're selling that for eight hundred. Uh, it would be very useful to get a lower lower cost version. We don't have a specific workshop plan for that right now, um, but I think the the highest priority right now is to develop the just just the turnkey package of the of the plastic recycling that we actually run that as a regular workshop. Because we we just do the 3D printer right now, we don't do the filament maker or the plastic shredder yet in the workshop. So I think getting that up to full speed for recycling programs and DIY filament and uh, getting that a little more developed, I think, is a higher priority at this point. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have time, do work on that. I mean, it's it's a thing that like on the on the D3D PVC, the D3D Mini, um, it's only a couple of days of, of design work. If someone were to prototype that that would be really helpful and maybe uh yeah we'll see how the lse clubs evolve but yeah right now we don't have enough people on a team to make the yeah, project really show up for the design sprint so uh we uh yeah and more that work. friday design sprint was a little bit of a all of a brainstorming session yeah. um I, I don't know if we're gonna do, do another design sprint friday again or something like that try to get more people if it's more organized yeah. Uh, but that might help. Yeah. yeah, I have to hold off for now because we're uh, we really got to get the, the 3D printing infrastructure part in place and also with a workshop coming up in, on the 20, 23rd through the 25th in London, Ontario. Um, it, it sounds like the, the PC frame is, is pretty critical because that's a pretty significant cost compared to the uh, or cost savings compared to the metal frames, right? That's yeah. That sounds like it that's is. a good percentage. It is. It yeah. is. It would be. But because it's one of those things that you have to develop everything, and it, it takes time to shake down all the little bugs. You know, it's not something mm -hmm. you can just get offhand. Yeah. You can do the first prototype easily, but then to make it into a product, it takes a little bit more work. So something we can yeah. put on the back burner in some way okay uh so let's continue going here um ruslan tell, so tell me um on your log i want to take a look at some of the your goals from october 30. uh so publish 3d printer cat file so that's for the aluminum extrusion version of the printer uh improve yep and do you have those files already, but you just haven't published? I have them, but I haven't published them. No, uh, uh, I, to be more precise, I uh, don't have a, a, a completely different uh, Instead, I have a couple of boxes and a frame. Yeah. And uh, some, some step attached to, to the axis. Okay. Yeah. I once posted a screenshot from them. Um, when you follow the third link in, in the frequently used links, yeah. um, on the top, D3D uh, version 8 and, and so on, uh -huh. the page then you will go to the page of, of my data and then the bottom or in the middle there is a screenshot of, uh, of frame corners and a couple of faxes is that in the genealogy um ruslan so 1806.12 is that so yeah. Yes. Yep. I see it. Yep. The basic version there. Mm -hmm. you, you see a couple of artifacts. It's, um, it's 
it is not supposed to look like this, but uh, you can uh, recognize what parts are already. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's uh, the, the frame and two axes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is what I would like to have uh, because they are automated. Yes. With the building of this axis because I don't use the standard uh, lengths of the axis. And yeah. This is a large. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I spent uh, some time just to make the axis. And probably again I, I will spend another two months, and then someone will will create the axis uh, in seconds. Yeah, yeah. That's so. You're planning on doing that over the next. Like, is that a high priority? Because that, that would be a high priority if you could do that. Uh, the automatization of axis? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I also, but I also want uh, to finish uh, the Python core page the planning integration that uh, I explained to you, the, the yeah. problem that so, sometimes uh, the parts are rotated in the wrong way when I adjust them uh, one by one. And yeah. uh, I, I have this strange feeling when, when the thing is uh, almost ready, but not ready. And um, I, would, I would prefer to have something which is complete and yeah. not... Uh, start a, a lot of projects which are uh, half done and then people will probably use it and sometimes hate, hate me for, for the bugs and uh, for missing features. I, I prefer that uh, to have something done. But yeah, those are only dreams, I understand. So we have a lot of parallel projects. Nevertheless, uh, with this feature, yeah, positioning of uh, of the uh, of pipes and uh, fittings is very important. In general, I, I think uh, this is one of the most important things in cricket. Uh, learn how to position things. Learn how to position things. Yeah. Use using. Um, in code or manually through the interface? Uh, yeah. All the possibility, or not any possibility you can use. Yeah. And the assembly work, uh, the problem with assembly workbench is it, it, it is a nice idea, but it uh, doesn't work, unfortunately. Right. Frequently. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. can you tell me, like, on your, so on a Sunday, October 30, 2018, let's put a number sign instead of a star in front of it and let's look at can you label which is number one like when you have you know amount of time you have is the first thing to do the auto generation or is that not your first thing yeah wait uh... so so i saved the changes there so I, I put numbers to those priorities which are all really good priorities but is automated generation of axes your first priority? But no, my, my first priority is complete the piping workbench. Okay. Complete the piping workbench integration with Flamingo. Because I want to go finish it and forget about it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. I will also publish the Politica first. I need uh, not that much time for it. Basically, make the repository publicly accessible. And is is the automated generation of axes after that? <laughs> when? Uh, I can start it maybe properly after that. I also wanted to repair Hermann's printer. What happened there? Uh, after transportations, uh, two parts uh, or some parts are missing. 
I saw the picture, but I didn't see the... When I look at your picture, I'm sure what's missing in there. I see the end stop, but what's broken? Why end stop fell off? So what, it's, you're holding it by tape or something right now? Um, there is a missing bearing. Completely, I cannot uh, use the axis because I have only one bearing and uh, I need two of them. Of them. Oh, bearing? How did bearing fall out? This is a mystery. No one knows. And, and Herman uh neither knows how it was possible uh you're talking about the idler bearing yeah bearing within the universal axis which uh, is made of two pieces yes huh that's a good mystery and also one of the bolts is missing okay mm. I guess I don't have to pass. I, I found uh, there is here. Yeah, yeah well, so uh, far, Hagerman has built the best 3D printer replica ever. I mean, his was worked the best out of anyone that I've seen, at least. He did a good job. Yes, it uh, also looks nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks really nice and works better than. The print quality on it was really good. I, he sent me some parts. They were really good. And I want to uh, use this printer to learn more about... Uh, and we've got the simple MK8 extruder on it. Which is... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So that's that's your priorities there. Anything else? That you'd like to hang out or yeah, studying and thinking about stuff, physics, which I recently talked about here. I have a general idea uh, to, to do more mathematics in the development. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, um, first, it's fun to do for me and yeah. uh, for efficient uh, reasons. Yeah. When when we have uh, mathematical problems in uh, in our development, uh, then I would probably solve them faster than a non-mathematician. Of course. Um, uh, when you when you solve mathematical problems, is that something you would put into FreeCAD as well as mathematical functions in there too, or you don't think that would go in there? Um, for example. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, well, mathematical things, thats that gets into computer-aided engineering. Well, there are some, uh, some simple stuff like geometry, but I do really, uh, really simple mathematics there. There is nothing mathematical about it. Right. Uh, you don't need some, some very, very abstract or, or complicated mathematics to do it. Right. You need to think about the stuff of um, well, geometry, rotation, and so on from time to time in order to produce all the stuff, uh, all the things. Uh, the, uh, the fittings, for example, they. Um, I need to calculate uh, them. But uh, those things are simple. Uh, I talked about. Um, before we do about uh, problem, uh, possible optical control application for the different and uh, maybe we'll have some other uh, other mathematical problems for uh, something uh, uh, from classical operation research mm -hmm. uh, how to buy things more efficiently efficiently or to cut uh, to cut things in, in pieces. Those are classical mathematical problems. Yep. Maybe, maybe you op plan, maybe planning, scheduling. Right. Mm-hmm. When do you plan on uh, getting so starting print parts for your your twenty twenty printer? 
So that's in the next few weeks. Um, the next week is, I want to buy a missing box if it's possible. And then I want to try to set up a uh, Herman Sprinter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Well, By the way, uh, uh, do you do still uh, some physics? Nah, I don't do any physics. <laughs> no, I'm just... And uh, after uh, that, oh, there, there are no pro physical problems that you find uh, in, in our development. No, I, my, my focus is on other things, more like getting the organization in place and and extreme manufacturing, which is more management problems than physics problems. So, but just basic, basic analysis of problems comes from physics, but a lot of the stuff I deal with is more about organizational development, really, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, did, did you want from the from time to time to to calculate something in old school research way? Only calculations I do are things like if I have a for example, this is what I do like on a regular basis. How much? You know, just crazy calculations such as if I have a the two hundred kilowatt solar off-grid micro factory if i wanted to bake bake rocks to make concrete how many bags of cement would i produce per day that's the kind of stuff i go through oh this is important yeah because uh, otherwise you, you can dream uh, as much as you want but uh, there are still laws of thermodynamics which uh, which are your natural constraints Yep. So. Yep. Anyway. I don't think I, I was uh, thinking about uh, probably do some uh, didactical stuff to, to teach me maybe indirectly make instructions. Basically, you do stuff which. Uh, I, I do it in my job. Mathematics teaching. I use, I use my knowledge efficient, efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's let's wrap up here though. So yeah, I'm basically getting the, you know, I'm printing parts here and getting the like really shaking down for high quality printing. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Because uh, I updated, if you look at the microfactory.opensourceecology.org, I put some specs on there for our printer, uh, started the, posted the three-day immersion program. So we're kind of doing that kind of stuff. But over the next two weeks, we're really shaking down the printers and building kits. So that's, I got to get back to that. And, and um, talk also talk about marketing. So got to get going. But yeah, so let's uh, let's continue next week then, and keep keep updating, do the work on um, part libraries for everything, so that eventually we can put together a lot of different design manuals. Because I think we're at the phase where we've got enough part libraries that we can we can be talking about design guides for a lot of the stuff that we have done already to get more people involved as we get students involved and others involved. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, okay, so let's. Um, Let's quit here, and thanks, guys, and then we'll talk again next week on on Tuesday, same time, which is 2 p.m. CST time uh, for the OSC Dev Club, Dev Team. Okay, thanks, everybody. <laughs>